Welcome back for another Top Notch video. This week, guys, we'll be talking about the first week of 2021 as well as our end of year review for Top Notch channel of year 2020. As always, if you guys are interested, the things that we talk about in this uh, channel are the CSI and S funds for the TSP. And for those that are not in TSP, Roth IRA and brokerage accounts, we talk about the ETFs, IVV, VXF, EFA, and AGG. What these equal is the C fund or IVV are equal and they equal the S&P 500. The S fund or VXF equals small caps. The I fund for TSP users or the EF, uh, ETF EFA equals international markets. And the F fund or AGG which equal to each other equal bonds. We take a weekly look at these funds. We like to see where they're going, what's happening with them, and how we can try and um, mitigate risk in our portfolios as we move forward. The first thing I want to go, if this interests you, please like, subscribe, or share. The first thing we're going to go over is the 2020 review. I think that's important. As always, we're very honest with this channel and we lay out what exactly happened. So for the 2020 review, um, looking at some of these blue boxes, which are the blue boxes we want to pay attention to. For this year, um, overall for the account, we added about $26,000 into the account, which is pretty good. Um, we capped, uh, we basically capped overall, yeah, oh, I would say added this year was a pretty decent gain. So with our gain here, and our interest gain overall was $26,000. Uh, the, the cap in the markets is $19,500 for Roth uh, 401ks. And we were able to beat that just a little bit with our match. The match does not count towards the cap. So overall, what we contributed was $20,600. And we ended up with uh, $6,000 in interest. That left us at right around $26,000, almost $27,000 for the year um, for our TSP account. Now, that was pretty good. Um, we did, we're doing really well. We're beating markets all the way through the year, guys, until we got to about mid-October. And then we had two months of extreme growth. Uh, we had an election cycle in there. And we decided to just kind of put our cash on the side and mitigate risk. What we ended up with for the year was about 8.5%. When we look at what uh, markets ended up with for the year, um, we're looking at this at the very end, the 31st of December. 31st of December here, 31st of December here. We look at markets. We look at the C, S, and I fund up here. Markets for the year, the C fund ended at 18%. The S fund, 31%. I fund was at um, 8%. And the F fund was at 7.5%. We ended up beating the bonds fund, or AGG, by a little bit. International markets, we came out just behind, a squeak behind that, but pretty much even with the I fund. What we didn't anticipate is the election. Um, both the S&P 500 and small caps really took off. Um, this one gained about 10% in November or December time frame, and this one gained uh, almost double or more than double on that. Uh, quite a significant amount in the S fund. Like I said, markets, you can never tell what they're going to do or not going to do, and yeah, this could have easily gone negative, so we wanted to just mitigate our risk, and we did. We got our 8%. Markets typically average 8 to 10% a year, so we don't feel too bad for what we did for mitigation, but we could have, um, we wish we'd done a little bit better on that. So that's what we did for the year. If we put inflation into our calculation, our total gain for the year is around 7.4%. That's a pretty good gain for the year. We didn't make money for the year. Um, and also keep in mind for this year, we never did go under 20, negative 20% like the markets did. So we did mitigate risk is what we do on this channel. Uh, the biggest hit we took was back in March. We took a 17% hit. Um, we stayed the course in markets all the way through until we hit uh, October time frame. Uh, we took our mar money out of the markets in the beginning, kind of shot up there and then put them in the mid and lost some money there. We stuck them out. We, we didn't really put any money in for November because the elections wanted to let things settle. And then in December, we ended up gaining a little bit there too, as well. So we only had two months in the negative. Um, not too bad overall. We mitigated a lot of risk. Ended overall with 8.5% with inflation, 7.4%. Not too bad. Let's move on to the new year. As you guys know, new year, new, new stocks, new funds. Let's go into what we kind of do. We kind of do a broad overview of this channel, and then we go into a more specific view of how things are. So what are we seeing in the beginning of this year? As you can see, 
for the beginning of this year, um, beginning of this week, we are up almost a uh, percent and a half on the C fund. The S fund in the first week, guys, is almost up 5%. That is uh, pretty historical. That is uh, pretty high to start in the first week of the new year. And the I fund is also up quite a bit. Um, and then the F fund is lagging. So let's talk about uh, just our broad overview of what we're seeing in the S&P 500. Again, this is TSP Talk. I uh, definitely recommend you check them out. They have a website. They do some commentary. A guy named Tom does commentary here. Does a very good job. Looking at uh, these charts that are posted on TSP Talk, as you can see, um, we have this trend channel, which we are trading in ever since uh, mid-November. This is kind of when we got out of markets, guys, and we let things kind of settle. There was a trend channel here, slowly up. Never saw it go back down. And very interesting enough, um, we were in this bounce around all the way till 2021, and then we saw it at the very bottom of 2020, uh, towards the very end of the year, it bounced down. And then uh, we went bounced right back up, and now we are above that trend line. That is kind of thing we want to be cautious about. That could come snap back in, or it could start a new rally higher. We are waiting to see where that will go from here. For small caps, the S fund, very interesting. Um, in November time frame, really took off. Markets really took off above all of our trend lines here, or um, yes, above the trend lines, moving up and forward. And then um, what happened here is we ended up that we had this dotted line in here and we broke that about mid-December and hit this uh, moving average line, the 20-day moving average line, and then it continued to move up again and now we're coming right up against that resistance waiting to see what it will do in the future. iFund, what did we see? We saw a bunch of gaps here, guys, in November. Gaps typically mean that the market will come to back to fill those. We saw one, two, three, four gaps. It's been on this upper trend line, trading very high up above the 50-day moving average. We'll have to wait and see where that goes from here. And finally, we have bonds. Bonds um, was doing very well here. We had a trend line at the very top. We thought that might break that when we saw this here in early or at late December for the top notch channel. It did not. Um, we waited for the first week to see where things go, and it really ended up dropping quite significantly here for bonds above, below the trend line. That's kind of our broad stroke overview. We're going to do some technical analysis now and looking at the charts. So the first chart up is IVV or the C fund. Um, we're going to just basically look at this. As you can see with IVV or the C fund, this is Finviz. It's a free website, by the way. Um, it is continuing to move up a little bit. Here we are above this trend line way above here we think that this might come down and touch this and uh, test this trend line that's what we we're thinking might happen here in the near future we'll have to wait and see with IVV if we look at it from a technical analysis we do a couple things this chart looks very busy I'm gonna break it down really quick you have price up here um, and then with price you have just uh, green and red bars which indicate price going up or down and then we have a couple indicators we like to watch. On the top notch channel, we like to look at the derivative oscillator, which is the green bars and red bars. When the green bars are going up, price goes up. When the green bars are going down, price goes down into the red bars, price is down. Red bars coming out, price goes up. Up and down, up and down, that's how it works. With It works just with price. And then we also like to look at the, um, the PPO line, which is a very interesting in indicator. It's the price percentage oscillator. When the price percentage oscillator blue line is above red, price goes up. When it is below red, it goes down. So that's kind of how we indicate those two very simple indicators to try and make decisions in the market. We like looking at these broad market funds because they um, have a lot of market participants in these funds. So it's very good to look at each one of these indicators. If we have two indicators up, that's a really good sign that markets could increase in the future. We look at two things as well. Long and short term charts. We look at long term charts and then short term charts to kind of see where price will be going in the long term versus the short term. With all that being said, let's get right into it. This is IVV or the C fund for TSP users. As you can see, our PPO line is above our red line. That is a positive sign there. Our derivative oscillator looked like it was coming down here towards the um, end of the year. We were at 2.6 there. We moved up to 2.7 and now we're at 3.3. We moved out of this fund uh, as a precaution. Uh, we, we blew the trigger a little bit early, I think, on this one, and price continued to go upwards. So that's, that's on us for sure. 
as the price continues to go up we're watching this very closely looking for that kind of pullback that we saw in the markets something to come down just a little bit here touch that line or that trend line uh, moving forward for IVV moving on to our next fund which is small caps VXF or the S fund as you can see here really bounced above the trend line here we're at the very top of this trend line typically when we hit that we see it pull back just a little bit we'd like to see that here happen um, part of the main reason why we got out of stocks is because this fund the small caps fund for the weekly chart same indicators is starting to go down on the derivative Oscar those green bars are starting to decrease we can start to see price to decrease a little bit here our PPO line is above our red line here which is good our moving average so that is a positive sign but we're one for one here that makes us a little more cautious we pull back on funds to wait and see where things will go for long-term charts as far as short-term charts go for VXF this chart is up it looks like it might be topping out here price here has a spinning top that means a lot of indecision in the market we'll have to wait and see where things go from there but we'll we'll see this is kind of um, a good place where we could see charts just take a little bit of a hit try to catch up before they start moving forward again that's kind of what we're looking for let's move into the next chart which is EFA international markets where are international markets this is the I fund EFA ETF where are they headed as you can see we are above our trend line here um, very high this could be a new breakout here very interesting to see that on our charts as far as they go on our charts our technical analysis charts long-term charts same indicators as you can see this one is falling as well derivative of oscillator this is one two three weeks down now PPO line looks like it's still extending a little bit here that is good for one for one sign uh, just tells us to be a little bit cautious so we don't have the green light we have a yellow light as I would like to say not a red light either where both indicators are down kind of waiting to see where EFA goes from there on a short-term chart we definitely do have a green light on this one as you can see both of our indicators are up prices continue to go up here we just want to be cautious to wait and see where this might go down in the future moving forward and last but not least we have AGG or bonds AGG ETF or F fund for TSP users a lot of a lot of very busy chart in here guys look at these trend lines a lot of trend lines in here the moving averages are very very close it was very hard to detect what would happen here we were above almost all our trend lines here moving to the top of this moving average we thought we might see a breakout here we moved into this fund towards the end of the month and it ended up going the opposite way so we waited one week to see where that would go broke a lot of our trend lines here a lot of things we did not want to see towards the beginning of the year that was not good um, so where did we go from there let's look at our technical analysis long-term charts same indicators as you can see we were looking for that breakout to happen looks like we were going out of the red bars price was moving up here good signs things we wanted to see that PPO line looked like it was about to cross but it did not this last week in December it did not cross we saw price uh, derivative oscillator move way back down two negative signs that's a red light that's not a fun you want to be in we definitely jumped out this week that's why we jumped out um, we didn't jump out of the bottom of this which was good about mid market um, so now we are in the G fund or cash for those that are in the Roth IRA and brokerage realm uh, for those TSP we are in the G fund um, waiting to look for our next move we're looking for uh, IVV or VXF one of the S&P 500 or small caps to pull back before we get our funds involved in those as far as bonds go for a short-term basis as you can see really negative here we were hoping it would come back into the Bollinger Bands Take when price is outside in the white space it moves back in it did that but then it continued to move lower so that was not good we see uh, derivative oscillator starting to move back up that is one sign but our PPO line is way below that is the yellow light that is very uh, cautious not a fun we really want to be in that is why we are out of it at this time if you guys have questions about our year-end review for 2020 or any of these stock funds please let us know please like subscribe or share we're trying to um, continue with this channel as you guys know we usually take a break for the October, November, December time frame. That's pretty normal for our channel. Um, and then we pick it up for the new year all the way through back till next September. So we'll be here weekly. Please like, subscribe, or share. Really appreciate uh, you guys and what you have. Write any comments down below. That's another top-notch video. We'll see you guys next time.